Hi, it's Yira, and welcome to my channel. Korea has released a new drama called Squid Games, and it is blowing up. And we're gonna create some costumes just in time for Halloween for you to wear. In the drama, the elites that watch from afar wear one of these over-the-top masks to keep their anonymity. I found that you can buy these masks for about $17 on Amazon, but it'll be delivered to you in November. Now, if you're cheap like me and would like to have one in time for Halloween, let me show you how to make one for under $5. One of the obvious ways is to 3D print one. However, I'm technologically challenged, so we're gonna go down the manual route and we're gonna use some knickknacks from the dollar store. Now, I got this really creepy clown mask to serve as the base for the mask, a couple of these Mardi Gras necklaces, some styrofoam balls, some wooden beads, and a gold spray paint that I just had lying around. I cut the bottom of the mask out and used some random scraps of paper to mold the base of the mask into shape. Then I started to paper mache on top of this to smooth everything out. I haven't done this since high school, so I'm definitely out of practice on how paper mache works, but I think it turned out okay. As for these Mardi Gras necklaces, I wasn't aware that each bead were embedded in with the string of the necklace. So I actually had to cut each bead away from the necklace individually and shave down any thread that may be peeking out. Each beads were glued down with a E6000 glue and I highly recommend doing this in a well ventilated area. I had a whole ass sliding door open to the backyard but even then I had some weird headaches after this part of the process or just not use this glue and just use a, a non-toxic type of glue. Then once I ran out of these Mardi Gras beads, I added styrofoam foam balls to the outer edges just to fill in the space and give more texture rather than a flat smooth paper mache surface. After everything dried, I took the mask outside and spray painted it in this gold color. Now this was actually my first time using spray paint and my husband, who's the one that's actually very familiar with this medium, didn't warn me that the spray paint would melt the styrofoam balls. So if you didn't know this, be warned, they melt styrofoams. So I ended up with these weird shapes on the edges and if I had known this earlier, I would have stayed far away from styrofoam. But because I had these only on the edges, it didn't take too much away from the whole look. And here is the final outcome. Now for the pink soldier, again, you can buy these costumes online for a pretty penny. It seems like you can buy a decent one from Etsy for about $20 to $30 or you could also 3D print one. But let's say you wanted to be nicer to your wallet and pull together something from things around the house. You just need some mesh like this one that keeps you protected from the bugs and the outside world that you can find on your window. Yes, these window screens and some glues and balloons. Funny enough, I heard that the masks these soldiers were wearing were inspired by ants. So it's kind of ironic that I'm using a window screen that keeps the buggers out. Now blow up the balloon, pop some balloons in the process. <laughs> Struggle with getting the mesh to adhere to the sexy curves of the balloon. Once I got the edges taped down, I brushed on some Mod Posh onto the balloon and then set it aside. When I came back to it, the balloon had deflated on its own and this was a complete failure and I decided to toss this away and just completely ignored its existence. Attempt number two. I went back to the drawing board and decided that I didn't want to struggle bus with the mesh again and I, I remembered this pattern making trick. You just need to take the balloon, tape an excessive amount of tape around it and make sure all of the surface area needed are covered. I made the mistake of using a tape that doesn't like adhering on top of itself and had to make another one except this time using painter's tape. Then pop the balloon and after finagling with the exoskeleton made of tape, you'll end up with a flimsy mold of the balloon that you can now manipulate. Now what I did was cut right across down the middle and then on the bottom half, I cut right down the middle as well, but this time vertically. Then I push these pieces down as flat as possible and then use that as a patterning piece to cut the mesh. 
Now for the upper half, I went and added these two seams in to, so that I could push it and flatten it down even easier. Then I cut some plastic boning I had around and started hot gluing these down to the boning and sewed the seams into the forehead area. And yes, this is actually how I hot glue things around because I actually do not have a hot glue gun. Damn it, I got burned pretty badly. Now, this is a good proof of concept, but it was still too not opaque it wasn't opaque enough so afterwards i went and doubled it up on the mesh to add that opacity in now if i did this again i would probably add maybe two more mesh on top of that now it's time to paint on the shape of the choice i went with the squares since squares are easier to draw then i went and painted the boning black now let's start on the pink overall the pink soldiers were wearing. For this, I decided to use this Tyvek suit I had randomly lying around. I really thought you could simply spray paint it pink and it'll be good to go. For those of you who know a thing or two about paint, you already know what's going to happen. As for the Tyvek suit, since it was something that I had just lying around in the house, it was an understatement to say that it was not my size. Oh no! Maybe I should shorten it first. Yeah? yeah. You look huge. Ah, I look huge? Yeah, you look huge. I look like a strong man. <laughs> you look like you look like a buff banana. <laughs> I'm a buff banana. <laughs> you even have the little banana sticker on. Chiquita? Yeah. <laughs> I mean I guess that's a Halloween costume yeah, yeah. in itself. <laughs> look at where the crotch is. <laughs> this is where my knee's at. Starting with the hood, I'm going to rip out the elastic and then I'm going to sh shrink everything so it fits better. Actually, I ended up ditching the seam ripper and just went with a scissor and just started hacking away at the hood part. And then I proceeded to hack away for the rest of the, the suit and sewed it right back up after trimming the excess off. Once it was to a satisfying fit, it was now time for spray painting. This is where I started making the horrible mistake of completely disregarding the core nature and purpose of Tyvek suit materials and thought that it was as simple as just spray painting it pink. If I would redo this, I would have used latex paint since apparently it would have more flexibility allowing for the paint to stretch and bend with the movement. Another method is to prime the suit with a material that would have allowed for that spray paint to stick onto better. And yes, during this process of spray painting outside, I got ton of mosquito bites. And yes, that is a electric fly swatter because there were so many mosquitoes. Okay, I got bit like crazy that day. The, the electric swatter, it helped to a certain bit. Mosquitoes were getting zapped and flinging over flinging over across. It's been about a week or so since the last time I touched these projects and that's mainly because I've been really out of it and I'm guessing it's from all the the fumes I was smelling from like the spray paint, especially the glue. I was basically sniffing glue unintentionally and then now I'm finally getting to a place where I could come back to it and have my head spaced together. I straight up don't know if it's because I'm like super sensitive to all the volatile fumes in these chemicals or if it's because I was getting overwhelmed with all these projects and I was burning out. I don't know. So it was actually both. It was both the burnout and the mixture of the volatile chemicals, but mostly the burnout. So that's why this video is taking me four weeks to get it out. <laughs> I'm trying to get into this Tyvek suit that's been spray painted. But let's just say there were things that I thought it would work, but it didn't. The paint is just completely chipping off of this. I thought it'd be okay. Like just, I just saw small chippings and it should be okay. But then, my floor right now is getting coated with chipped paints and it's getting worse as I'm trying to get into this. Kind of a failure, but I mean, if you could figure out how to seal it in, then it works. Literally left a trail of paint chip confetti wherever it went. You bet, I was finding that paint chip in random places for 
days even after thorough cleaning. It's like these are the sisters to glitter. Dressing up as the players is one of the easiest costuming to do, especially when it's the last minute. It's also the most comfortable costume to be living in for the day. For the tracksuit, I had some scrap poster board paper around, busted out my paint since I couldn't find a permanent marker that matched the color of my tracksuit. Then I chose to go with 067. I went and dug out my old tracksuit from my high school days and taped a little number on the front. And here is the final look. Knock off Power Rangers! My specialty is paint chips! There's confettis of paint chips flying everywhere!